Hello everyone and welcome back to the Wrench and Fool. In this video we're going to be charging my 2024 Kia EV9 on a Tesla supercharger. Let's get started. All right, my apologies if there's a bunch of wind noise. I'm gonna to try to keep my microphone hidden in here. But we're here at the Tesla Supercharger. I'm just gonna show you quickly how to get started charging here. Now I've got my phone here. I do have the Tesla app already because I have a Tesla. So I'm gonna open that up. This is my car. But we're gonna go up to the menu here and there should be a part here where it says charge your non-Tesla. We're gonna hit that and we are here at the Boardman Supercharger. There's nobody here. We're gonna hit that one. And down here at the bottom, it says charge here. I'm gonna press that. And we are at stall 1A. I'll show you that in a little bit, but the numbers are down here at the bottom of the supercharger. This particular one I'm at is in a weird spot, but we'll just have to kind of deal with that. Um, I'll show you why that's an issue later. But anyway, we're gonna pick 1A, start charging. and it shows you here how to undock the charger from here. So it says push and hold the button on the handle for two seconds. The button is right here. You can kind of see it marked. So I'll push that, push and hold for two seconds. Then you push in and pull out. And then we have that here. And so I'm gonna open up my charge port, flip the little door open, oops and we're gonna plug in and let's see what happens. Seems like we're starting to charge. All right, the car says it's charging. Let's go have a look inside and see what's happening. before I could even get back to the car, we've got a charging failed message here. So I'm going to unplug from this charger. We're going to try a different charger. Maybe this one's just not working. That said, it does give me an opportunity to show you how to unplug it. So there's a button on top of the adapter here. Not this button here, the one on top of the adapter. You push that one, it unlatches from the car and release it. Then back over here at the charger, you just put it back into the magic dock here. Just push it up until it clicks, and there you go. It's put back. I'm going to go try a different charger. Okay, that should be good. Okay, so now we are at charger 1D, which again, it's down here, 1 delta. So I'm gonna open my app back up here. Okay, we'll go back to charging on Tesla. We are still at the Boardman Supercharger. Charge here. And again, we're at one delta. So I'm gonna pick one D, start charging. Okay, so this time I'm gonna open this up first. And we're going to Push and hold the button on the handle for two seconds. Push in, pull out. Now we've got that. Plug it in. Let's see what happens this time. I'm gonna go look here in the car just to see what I see. Okay, it's ramping up five, seven, eight, nine, so it's maybe charging this time, up to 25 kilowatts, the EV9 just ramp up very slowly, so now we're up to 75 kilowatts, 76, 77,
and it seems like this is where we're going to level off. Well, this is better than what I saw in the Ionic 5 the last time I was here, but still not good. I did preheat the battery on the way here, and it preheated to completion, so the battery is plenty warm. We should be getting 200 kilowatts right now, not 78. All right, I'm back here in the car where it's a little bit warmer. I'm going to sit here and charge for a little while just to see if anything changes, even though I really doubt it. But while I'm sitting here waiting to see if we get any better charging speeds, let's kind of talk briefly about why we might be having this issue, why we're only getting, at this moment, 77 kilowatts out of a charger that's capable of charging a Tesla at 250 kilowatts. Well, the short answer is incompatibility. The Ionic 5, EV6, GV60, all of the eGMP vehicles, including the EV9 here, operate at higher than 500 volts uh, battery voltage. The cars like the Ionic 5, the EV6, the GV60, the ones with the smaller battery pack, and even the EV9 with the smaller battery pack, they operate at somewhere around 700 volts uh, with a nominal charge. The, uh, EV, the EV9 here operates somewhere between 500 and 600 volts. It's a bigger battery with lower voltage just because of how the cells inside are wired up. It's just the way it is. The problem with that is that Tesla superchargers are designed to work with Teslas. The Model 3, Y, S, and X all operate at about 400 volts. I think the S and X do go over 400 volts, um, maybe up to like 450 or something, but they're all considered 400 volt cars. And the problem with that is that their superchargers only put out, I think, a maximum of 500 volts. I'll have to look at one of the, uh, the stickers on there to see for sure, but I think they only put out 500 volts. Well, this car right now, even at 19% state of charge, is going to be over 500 volts, which means that the charger by itself is not capable of charging this car because the battery voltage and the charger voltage have to match. And actually, the charger has to be capable of putting out slightly more voltage than what the battery is, otherwise it would never charge. It charges because of the differential in voltage. All of the eGMP cars and any other 800 volt car has to have hardware on board to step up the voltage from the charger up to whatever the battery voltage is. With all of the eGMP cars, it uses the rear motor inverter to do that. I could be wrong, but I believe that that's the case. Well, there's a limitation, unfortunately, on how much that motor inverter can go backwards and basically take voltage from the charger and step it up to voltage for the battery. So with the earlier eGMP vehicles, they would have an issue more like what we saw with the first charger, where you'd plug in, you'd start charging, it would start ramping up, and then something would fault and it would stop. Um, I never personally experienced that, but that was what was happening early on with the, uh, with the first Magic Dock superchargers. Later on, they were having issues where there was a significant power limit, and I did experience that with my Ionic 5. It would only charge at 40 kilowatts. So we can see here we are charging here at the supercharger, but we're only getting 42 kilowatts. Um, being that we just drove in here after charging about an hour ago at a fast charger, the battery is definitely not cold. So I'm thinking that that's all that this supercharger is going to put out. Well, now here with the, uh, the EV9, we're still sitting at about 78 kilowatts. Again, we should be getting 200 kilowatts at this point. And I think the issue is still a combination of incompatibility and probably a hardware limitation of the EV9. I suspect that we're probably hitting an amperage limit. Maybe it's only capable of, say, 200 amps uh, conversion. So it's only probably drawing about 200 amps from the charger right now. And that's just as much as it can do. And so I don't know if there's anything on the supercharger end that might be limiting this. Uh, the superchargers are capable of 350 amps continuously, and I think well over 500 amps for a... That's how Teslas are able to charge at 250 kilowatts for that pretty short period of time, is they, they're actually pushing higher than what the chargers are rated for, but they just do it for a short period of time. Um, I don't think either the car or the charger is capable of charging at 250 kilowatts for very long. So let's just talk really briefly about some of the issues with 
Tesla superchargers, how they're set up, and how that relates to other cars. We've already talked about the voltage limitation of the Tesla supercharger itself. The other big one that's going to be a really big issue is the fact that I am currently parked in what should be the stall, the parking spot for that stall. You should always have your charger to the driver's side of the car. The problem with that is there's nowhere to connect that over here. There's nothing on the EV9 and a lot of other cars that I can plug into here. And you can see the cables on the superchargers are really short. There's no way that that cable is gonna reach all the way to the other side of the car. Now you might think to yourself, well, I can just use this supercharger. Well, no, because that's the supercharger for this parking spot. If a Tesla then pulls into this one, expecting to use this supercharger, they can't. Well then, you know, maybe they could use this one. Well, no, because then they'd have the same problem. Their charge port on the supercharger on the Tesla is on the driver's side. So there's no way that that cable is going to reach from over here all the way to the driver's side of the vehicle. So that's the big issue. Realistically, the way this should be set up is that charger should be over here. It should be in the center of the parking spot. And then that cable needs to be probably at least two or three feet longer than it is. If they did those two things, this supercharger site here with the Magic Dock could charge literally any CCS car out there. As it is right now, thankfully nobody is here. So I'm not blocking anybody. But if somebody was here right now, I would be preventing them from using the correct charger. Now they do have these superchargers here on the side, like this first one that I pulled up to. The problem with that, as you can see, is that for it, in order for it to reach my charge port, I'm way out in the street here. The other option is I could park over here, but then again, I'm still blocking the road here, at least partially. Yes, people can go around, but I'm still parked way out in the middle there. It's not a good idea. Well, if we're continuing to charge at this speed, the car right now is saying it's gonna take 45 minutes just to get from 20 to 80%. I could go find another charger and charge a lot faster than that. It's probably right over there, actually. There's uh, some other chargers that are just CCS chargers, well, CCS and Chatamo. All right, that's gonna be it for this video. Thanks for watching.